the house. Um, this was an ancient sort of cosmopolitan university from different cultures around the world. In the first 400 years, uh, from AD 0 to AD 400. And after that, the bricks were then found at the site. It got built into the pyramids and, and the whole university idea was forgotten about. Um, so 640 bricks or 17.3 percent had old world inscriptions on them but many were found with Mayan and old world inscriptions on the same bricks so they were put into the Mayan category. Um, many had drawings on them, 735 or 20 percent had drawings on them and 300, 308 of the bricks were mixed or, or unknown writings or unknown languages on them. So we have here a very unusual situation where the official dating of the pyramids, the construction 700 AD to 800 onwards, actually got abandoned around 900 AD, so it was only flourishing for a couple of hundred years. What's frustrating is that only nine point, only half of 1% of the site has been excavated or reconstructed. So there's potentially another million bricks leased with old world and Mayan inscriptions on them. So this is one of these very anomalous sites. It's one of the reasons we wanted to take you here on the tour, because it just gives this whole other dimension to the Maya. This is also the most, officially, it's the most western Mayan site. Uh, so we're, it's, it's kind of the furthest east we're going, but it's actually the most western Mayan site. What are the, what are the old world cultures that supposedly have script or uh, well, ones that have been found there, Arabic, Phoenician, Libyan, Egyptian, Ogham, Tifinag, I'm not too sure exactly what that is, Chinese, Burmese, and Pali-Burmese. So, as Hugh Newman was explaining, during the initial archaeological work being done here at Comal Calco, supposedly a number of baked clay bricks used in the construction, especially of the, probably the pyramid we're coming up to, showed different forms of writing. Mayan, obviously, because this is a Maya site, but also supposedly Old World, as in, um, as he previously discussed, uh, Egyptian, uh, maybe even Chinese, Phoenician, etc. But the museum had no examples. So you have to conclude either that the story is a fabrication or that these examples of uh, writing which don't fit the normal Mesoamerican history have been hidden away on purpose. And what we've seen is that the, the Olmec, there are no really sophisticated constructions at all. There are piles of dirt and things like that. Of course, the, the big stone heads, but no construction of any sophistication whatsoever as compared to this, which is more of the classic Maya work. So this could be evidence of one of the ancient ball courts with howler monkeys in the background. And it's believed that the Olmec may have invented the ball court process, but it was perfected by the Maya later. So what I've been looking for is evidence of the arrival of what is called the plumed serpent, known to the Maya as Kukulkan and to the Aztec and possibly the Teotihuacan culture as Quetzalcoatl. And he is said to have been 
a light-skinned man with a full beard who came as a teacher from a distant land. Amongst the Olmec, there's almost zero evidence of his existence, but once you get into the Maya and the Teotihuacan and the Aztec, there's substantial evidence because you see these figures with full beards, which Native Americans in general can't grow to this very day. So that possibly could give us a date as to his arrival, maybe around, you know, literally around the time of Christ, but I'm definitely not saying that it was Christ. But that sort of timeline, 100 BC to 100 AD. So we have two forms of building technology here, predominantly the work of the Maya, and that's stucco, and also baked clay bricks. No stone whatsoever, because there is no stone in this area. So that is one thing that makes this, um, this complex kind of int interesting, in that it's different to other sites where we see a lot of volcanic stone incorporated, but since there's none in the area, of course, they're going to use what they have, and that's clay and volcanic ash mixed with lime to make a primitive kind of concrete. So we are looking at the plausibility that there was a great light-skinned teacher or teachers who had a full beard around the time of 100 BC to 100 AD. He or they would have first appeared in what we call Peru, and would have taught what would become the Inca, because the Inca more or less formulated during that time. Their knowledge level was way beyond anybody in the area. And then he or they traveled to the coast uh, at the border of Peru and Ecuador, sailed to the northwest, and wound up where we are in this, uh, this part of Mesoamerica, uh, the Gulf Coast area, of um, Mexico. And there to the Maya he became known as Kukul Khan, and then he traveled onwards northwest into what is now called Mexico City, and there he became Quetzalcoatl, or they.